You are listening to the Money Matters Podcast. You've got myself, Jack Mallers. You've got my father, Bill Mallers. You've got Anon Mallers, my friend, my chief of staff, Dylan Lito. How are you guys doing? Excellent. Great. Great. Ready to rip. That's a Chicago Bears jersey right there in the top right. Um, the woeful, pathetic Chicago Bears. For the time being, for the time being, you know. Um, since yeah, I was I alive, know. since I was alive. Right, <laughs> right. Um, no, of course I had to wear the Bears jersey. Not only is it orange, but um, no, there's a rumor going around, at least on the blog I, I follow, that um, Chicago is in the running for Saquon Barkley. Saquon's, I don't know what's going on. You guys tell me, but he's not happy in New York or – to, um, but anyway, Chicago, like I said, you want to be a sports hero anywhere in the NFL. I yeah, I go Chicago. I mean, there's take them, like I say, there'll be a Saquon Barkley steakhouse, or you can yeah. I'd start by showing them the Michael Jordan statue that's out in front. I mean, we do we do. We take care of our sports heroes, not like not like New York. Yeah. I mean Sa- in, get them out of here. Saquon, uh friend of the pod, I think. Probably New York, Chicago, Boston. Uh, the Patriots are probably, uh, I don't know, the, the biggest markets to build a legacy. I mean, maybe San Francisco uh, is another good market. I don't think Phil, I don't think you're building a legacy. I mean, they got a good fan base, but Philly, like, um, who's the Michael Jordan of Philly? <laughs> Lil Uzi Burt. Yeah. All right. Well, that's the dumbest, <laughs> ridiculous answer of all time. That's a good way to continue my introduction on that moronic point. I will continue my introduction to our sponsors. A reminder, we don't have any sponsors. We self-host this podcast. We really enjoy it. Um, but the point is just to build a relationship with Bitcoiners. It's pure, authentic, unbiased. Nobody pays us to talk about anything. Our opinions are not biased at all. I'm the founder and CEO of Strike. My dad's been in financial markets for 45 years. Is that right? I'm, I know it's above 40, less than 50. <laughs> Something like that. Um, and so we just want, we think that a casual, you know, on your way home from work on Monday, authentic, real, passionate conversation about Bitcoin with Bitcoiners needs to exist. Uh, and so that's what we do. So with that, uh, what are we talking about, Lito? Uh, switch and stack to start. Oh, our promotion. Did you see that, Dad? No. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll, I'll have to explain it. It's a good excuse to explain it again. So we launched a promotion called Switch and Stack, which um, I need you to grade that name. Lito named it. I need you to grade the name after you hear what it does. So uh, Switch and Stack is... A lot of exchanges, I won't name them, I won't name them, but a lot of exchanges are just going down. Every day they go down. I don't know if you know who I'm talking about, but it um, it starts with a C, it ends with an E, they're blue, and every single fucking day they go down. And we were getting a ton of new customers uh, that just wanted someone who could sell them fucking Bitcoin. And that's all we do. We don't focus on shit coins. We don't do all sorts of extra ridiculous stuff. We don't need to lobby in Washington, D.C. And please, Senator Warren, please don't try and sue Ethereum. And so uh, we just built Bitcoin. And so we put a promotion out and said, if you are having a tough time on another platform, if you're on another shit coin exchange or you're on a Bitcoin exchange that's charging you too much, whatever it is, You can come to my service and I'll give you 0.69% from now into the halving just to give it a try. So Coinbase will charge you like 4%. So I'm charging almost half a percent. Just give it a try because there is a company out there that is one of the best in the world just at Bitcoin. If you want a shit coin and you want to fucking do all that San Francisco ha la and just go down every day, who would ever build an exchange that goes down? I mean, coming from a guy... Who, who built exchanges in Chicago, how do you build a market that goes down? 
constantly like it's a food delivery service. <laughs> um, but uh, so that's our switching our switch stack is if you want to switch over to us and just give it a try. If you don't like it, then don't use it. But I guarantee you there's not many people in the world that are better at giving you a Bitcoin service than I am. And so I said, fuck it. It was on, on the flight home from Portugal. I pinged the team and said, as soon as I land, I'm going to record a video and get this out there. And yeah, we just got customers coming from all sorts of services. They're like, oh, wow, 0.69% is a really good deal. And by the way, guys, if you have family, friends, and you need to get them into Bitcoin, get them on a strike. 0.69% from now to the halving. It's a, it's a great service to give it a try. I mean, you'll never find, I think, spot real Bitcoin cheaper than that. Uh, that's as cheap as it gets. So that's the promotion. I don't know if you know what exchange I'm talking about, though. Uh, <laughs> yeah, starts with the C, ends with an E. Pedals shitty ass currency to the public. Is it Chase Bank? <laughs> Is it Chase Bank? Yeah, yeah <laughs> could be. <laughs> no, I like it. I like I like the name. It's got stack in it, so that's good enough. There you go. I got I got an A from Bills. That's all I need. That's all I need. <laughs> Yeah, but for for all those listening, seriously, all you got to do is you could DM me on Twitter, you could DM Strike on Twitter, you could DM me on Nostra, you could email private at strike.me. Our support team obviously is very aware of it. So if you're on an exchange that's one charging you more than 0.69%, why would you not use us? I don't get that. But also, if it just goes down, that's that's the ridiculous thing is all we do is exist just to do Bitcoin well. So if all if what you're looking for is to do Bitcoin, give it a try. Um, in fact, I'll I'll leak this um, because hopefully by the time people are listening, I will have figured it out. I pinged my legal team and my engineering department late Friday, and I said, "Hey guys, um, I started hacking on a control where whenever I want." I could discount everyone on strike, every single customer, uh, like something like half off or something. Uh, and I said, you know, every time some certain exchange starts with a C, ends with an E, uh, favorite color blue, anytime they go down, I may just provide half off until they're back up again. Um, <laughs> just to, just to, just to joke about it. So maybe this week, if they go down, uh, Strike may be selling some really cheap Bitcoin um, just for shits and giggles. So, all right. Nice. Lucky Sunday, you guys got your brackets. Uh, you know, you know, in, in a history of working in a sports crazy, um, you know, office or trading floor or stuff, I don't think I've ever gotten out of the first weekend with any hope of that bracket. Like, I usually have three out of my final four teams are pretty much finished by the first weekend. Well, I'm depressed about college basketball. The Duke, the Shire era, embarrassing. I told you. It's just um, all the talent in the world, the McDonald's All-America team, and what there's just – there's a Coach K toughness that I just – I'm not sure that team is nah, – but, you know, the first couple of years of Coach K was pretty awful also, so we'll we'll give Shire some time. Oh, actually, um, I just realized we're talking about basketball. I'm kind of busted a little bit. You know, there's never anything ever in the closet, right, except this chess set behind me. But if you look in the reflection of the mirror, I have two basketballs I can see. I do play a lot of basketball. We're talking about March Madness, so there's technically – two basketballs in the closet so the closet isn't empty this morning it's got two basketballs in it you know i was trying to get you guys to do the pod on a remote like a, like a having party in el salvador or something you could if there's say like a west coast bracket um you guys could come out here and do a i will probably play somewhere around here ucla uc santa barbara something mm -hmm. will be a west coast there'll, there'll be a regional around here somewhere you guys could do a a final four bracket yeah if, podcast if miners pick up the pace yeah we definitely can <laughs> they're gonna have to start mining Where are we, 420 422 420 right on it is that is that true i'm not let me look at okay, it nodding at Bitcoin me block. last time i looked at a countdown clock it was it was 422 but cookie's thinking 420 uh, yeah 420 gmt 21 hours that would just be 
would be perfect. <laughs> that would just be incredible. <laughs> yeah, April 20th. Okay. Um, but uh, no, yeah, college basketball. I don't want uh, Duke. Duke worries. I love switching stack. I like any. I mean, like I said, it's got stack in it. This is. I, I like you guys' approach. I don't. I think most people are. You know, just don't have the time to sit in front of a screen all day long. And, and a and a dollar cost average option that, as as cheap as you guys can do it. Yeah. It's America users only for now, but obviously we're going to try and bring it to Africa. And then uh, we're launching we're launching a market. Starts with E, ends with E, rhymes with syrup. Uh, we're launching that in about a month. Um, and so that's, that's the big one that I'm super excited about. So anyway, all right, uh, switch and stack. You guys DM me if you want cheap Bitcoin. Uh, we don't go down. Or if you're... Uh, friends and family are asking you about Bitcoin because it's making new highs. Um, just shoot me a DM. I'm happy to get you guys a discount. Yeah, I think in the spirit of uh, Switch and Stack, I did want to talk about we're a month and 10 days away from the halving. Uh, if there's ever a time to accumulate Bitcoin, it is right now. Hot off of our Madeira trip, I heard a considerable amount of people that I would consider retail talking about micro strategy stock and how their micro strategies positions are are you know ballooning at the moment as speculators come in and want exposure to bitcoin but maybe can't necessarily buy the spot price but we were talking about retailers which led me to a question you know again a month and a ten uh, a month and 10 days out the time you accumulate is now you have three options for for retail essentially it's spot bitcoin you can buy bitcoin custody that bitcoin on an app or yourself um, you can get exposure to Bitcoin kind of through micro strategy or the ETF itself. Um, at this point, what, what would you recommend for a retailer looking to get exposure to Bitcoin and why would it be one of those options and not the others? Or is it all three? Yeah, no, or, um, I mean, one of the whole points of Bitcoin, right? Not your keys, not your coin is counterparty risk and eliminating counterparty risk. So if you're going to participate through, I mean, that was always the issue. You're going to participate through a derivatives product at the CME. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't that entail an additional, what if, yeah, but CME is 150 years old and, and has weathered every financial crisis. So, but yes, that anytime you introduce any more trusted third parties into it, you're kind of inching away from the whole point. So if if a retail guy is going to participate, if like you say, a private company um, like MicroStrategy has basically turned themselves into a for-profit ETF, right? That um, is very no. I mean that's brilliant, and he's he, right. Doesn't he have an odds-on chance of getting his company into the S and P five hundred? Um, but no, if you're, I, I think, like I said, you're just no problem with that. But you are one in one step away from the not your keys, not your coin. Whole point of this protocol is control it yourself. So no, I would say the best thing that a Bitcoiner can do. Sorry, write down your, you know, get a get it off the exchange, get it, or I'm sorry, get it off the internet. You know, there's plenty of uh, pretty affordable devices, um, and and move it off exchange and not participate, um, you know, through um, an ETF or or micro strategy. Even I mean, come on, that's I, we used to just lecture people like that endlessly ten years ago. Oh, uh, but wait a minute, the 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 best and brightest of our industry went to Japan, interviewed Carpellis, and vouched for his solvency. Okay, how do how that that thing went down? Right, six months later, that was. <laughs> <laughs> and there were Eastern European exchanges. There were, um, and right. So don't you just you cannot rely um, on testimonials or verifications or whatever they say. Proof of reserves is better. It's getting a lot better, but I would still always try to reduce counterparty risk. Yeah, well, it's it's an alternative financial system. It's not like the the point is uh, to build a. A separate financial system. I don't want to be part of the existing one. Um, so yeah, like if, and I, I also, I mean, we've talked about this where you said your uh, biggest fear or threat is tax. 
is that if they can't monetize Bitcoin by printing dollars, then there's only one other way the government's going to try and monetize it, which is taxing it. And so I think it's a lot harder to tax 24 words that are in my head than yep. it is to tax my MicroStrategy shares. <laughs> so yeah, it's an alternative financial system is I'm not a part of it. You know, like I got words in my brain that are storing my money, not I don't have shares in an S&P 500 com uh, company or a financial uh, ETF instrument, security instrument that all that then holds the physical as I, I'm out of the system. So I don't know. I mean, it, it's clearly the better way is to own physical spot Bitcoin. Um okay. Just one more thing. Do you want to own? I'm sure the gold mining stocks perform very well when gold rallies, but you just got one more, you know, one more layer of trust in there. I got to trust that Barrick Mining is running their operation well, that there's not, that guy's not going to embezzle stuff or shut it down, right? Or go Mount Gox on us. So, in addition to being, you know, correct about the underlying, may as well just, just own, own direct underlying. Yeah. I mean, I think the ETF. Uh, the, how they tax the ETF is already uh, pretty fucked. I'm I'm pretty sure. Uh, that I'm not. I can't. I'm not your resource on that one. I've never understood taxes. I that. <laughs> it's um compliance, taxation stuff. Um, um, but I thought ETFs were advantageous. Uh, that's why uh, among the reasons, right? Is they can be collateralized better or borrowed against. Yeah, better. people are more banks financial. Traditional financial is just more comfortable with the structure as opposed, you know, to just trying to trying to collateralize a loan with with my trezor. They, you know, they don't trust that. But ETFs are are they're just more comfortable with, right? Yeah. 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 I don't know. I like ETFs to me are just very fiat. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> In the sense that you you're thinking of Bitcoin through a fiat lens. Like I'm here to just make more fiat. But like you can't scan any QR codes, you can't store the asset in your brain, you can't pass it down to your hairs. Like, right. do you know what inheritance tax is on your Bitcoin ETF? Fifty percent. How how ex yeah. how expensive is it for dad to hand me a trezor before he takes his last breath? Fifty <laughs> fucking percent. So it's like it's just it's an alternative financial asset, right? Um, you, if you're using it through the existing financial system, you got existing financial system problems. That's the that's I am out with you on that one. Um, well, what would be the so I'm just looking at one month here, um, and I'm sure if I extrapolate this over a lifetime or whatever, the numbers might be different. But looking at a one month chart, micro strategies up 98.6%. Looking at a one month chart, Bitcoin's only well, only that's a ridiculous thing to say is up uh, 45 and a half percent. What would be the like what would be the logic behind microstrategy and any sort of time duration outperforming Bitcoin if microstrategy is a speculative way to get exposure to Bitcoin? Well, supposedly it's a you know, Bitcoin doesn't generate a dividend. It's not a Bitcoin's not a you know a software company. It's supposedly it's a it's an income generating, you know, it's a two for one, right? It's an income generating Bitcoin ETF where every other Bitcoin ETF you know, the only way to generate income off Bitcoin is, right, lend it out. And that's bad. <laughs> and we don't like, <laughs> yeah, I don't think, the, I, I think there will be probably more reliable lending options in our future, but I, I would not recommend that at all. Um, but micro strategy, right, auditable, profit, profitable company with a with a long history of, um, yeah, it's kind of a two for one. He has kind of, it's a workaround to, right, it's an ETF workaround and, like like I say, one of the really fun things about Bitcoin is how many clever people and you know you find that you run across in this. Um, how many people like we're just gonna keep banging their head against the SEC and keep getting no answers? And he came up with a really clever workaround and he's gonna make a lot of money. Good for him. Yeah, I I think so obviously physical spot Bitcoin be part of the new financial system. Mm -hmm. not the old is number one. I think two is obviously micro strategy.
to me, the ETFs are last place. Because, yeah, you're getting um, Sailor, uh, it's a cash flow business. I, I mean, not as if though the cash flow is growing quarter over quarter like Dorsey's company. I mean, those guys grow ridiculous. Like every earnings report is like, oh, that number's up 57% quarter over quarter. That number's up 800%. <laughs> So sailors not growing like cash app is, but, um, it is cash flow business. Uh, the other thing is access to capital. So what sailors doing is whenever his share price gets above the fair market value of the Bitcoin and the cash that he has, then he goes and gets more capital. Uh, and he then that's, that's his whole thing. Like micro strategy is now going to buy 600 million more dollars worth. He's just arbitrage. He's just running a speculative attack on the dollar by getting access to all this capital as a public company. He's got access to really cheap dollars. Um, he can finance these things. So I'll, Hey, I'll pay you back in 10 years and an interest rate of like 0.5%. Um, and so Maybe. that's the other thing he's going to, he, he loves this metric of Satoshi's per share. And so Sailor can continue to grow the Satoshis per share of the company, and an ETF can't do that. Um, so I think it's obvious that owning MicroStrategy, the last thing I'll say is that this one, I'd be curious your thoughts on that, and that's a little bit more nuanced, but very clever and very much part of his plan, if I had to guess, is that we've talked about how when the U.S. leaves the gold standard in 1971, and starts printing dollars. So I'm trying to put this in layman's terms. That means that dollars aren't money anymore because if you hold dollars, you just get more poor over time. So you have to own something else. And what America decided to own was real estate and the stock market primarily. Those are the two assets that they what uh, monetized is what is what you know we're using the terminology for for turned into a store of value. And so the problem with that is that they're not actually money. Money is a market good that you buy not to consume it, but to exchange it later for another market good. That's not real estate. You don't buy real estate to exchange it later for your groceries. You buy real estate in theory to live in it or to host parties or to run your company. But Americans didn't have, or the world, the populace didn't have a choice. They had to get out of their currency because government started to inflate it and use other things as stores of value. The stock market is one of those things. And so I think MicroStrategy is also inflated and NVIDIA is also inflated because it is used as a store of value where e ETFs, I, so if Sailor gets into the S&P 500, like the S&P 500 is treated like money, but it's not. It's not actually money. If you go back to economics 101, what is money within a marketplace of goods? It's not. But it gets passive flows. Every single person that gets a job in this country, some portion of their paycheck goes into the S&P 500. So sailors taking advantage of the fact that America is so fucked up. It's so it's monetized all the wrong assets because the government screwed everybody by removing the gold standard and printing a bunch of dollars. And so Bitcoin will demonetize all of these things. All that means is hey, take the uh, like people won't have to use them for money anymore. Bitcoin will make housing more affordable. Bitcoin will bring down the price of companies stock because they don't need to be trading at 10,000 times multiples. Um, but the reason that these things are so inflated is because they attract all the, the capital and all the wealth because they've been stores of value for, what's the date, for 50 years, 53 years? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, I think also the, is like you say, the stock market has kind of been changed the definition. It's it, where you used to, like, look for hard assets. Um uh, the stock market is kind of, I mean, between circuit breakers and whatever, what are people call like the Fed put, if, if an election year, something does, something in, does go wrong, Ukraine spirals out of control and the stock market is, you know, 
in in a lot of trouble. There, there's no reason to believe you know the government won't do what it has done. You know, always in the past is find a way to prop it up. Whether you want to be cynical and say that's because of an election year, it's because it's every year. It's because there's simply too much debt in the system um, to allow for any kind of of economic shock, financial markets type of shock. So, and the markets, I think, act that way. This is just a been a new high kind of grind. Like you say, where, where do you want to start? Stocks, real estate, gold. I mean, pretty much every, those are all, as I've said, iterations of a, of a short dollar trade. And I don't see any reason that that's going to stop in the near term. Yeah. Uh, but I want to spend a second because there was just an interview on Fox where Larry Fink was talking to the reporter and the reporter was like, Bitcoin isn't money. You can't buy pizza with Bitcoin. And then Larry Fink's like, well, what about gold? And he's like, well, well, gold Gold's in my iPhone. Pe people use gold. Gold has value because people put it in technologies and no one puts Bitcoin in technologies. And it's just such a violent misunderstanding of what money is. Money is a market good, just like a cheeseburger, just like a house, just a, 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 a good within the market that you buy to exchange later for something else, not to consume it. So I buy a cheeseburger to consume it. I buy a house to consume it. If my money is put in iPhones, that's a money that's becoming bad money because people are buying it to consume it. You don't want that. Like silver got demonetized and it's now in my phone. That's why we don't use silver as money. It got demonetized. It's, it, its use in the marketplace is for consumption. So you want a money that's pure purpose. The beautiful thing about Bitcoin is you can't even see it. You can't even touch it. You can't even put it in a phone because its point is hopefully that you buy it to exchange it later. And so that it's just such a violent misunderstanding of what money is supposed to be. And so the stock market, equity in a company should never be money because what you want out of a money, I don't want risk in money. I, I contributed energy, whether it was mowing lawn or starting a company or working as an accountant. And I want to exchange that into a money that I can then save and use later in the marketplace. I don't want to spend my time mowing a bunch of lawns only to then have to take counterparty risk with Coca-Cola. Because what, what if they launch a really shitty soda? What was the Bud, Bud Light had a campaign that people didn't like? Like, why would I work my whole life to take counterparty risk with the S&P 500? I want to work my whole life to hold a hard money that I can exchange later. And if I want to take some of my money and say, I want counterparty risk with that CEO or with that company or that founder, but the stock in a company isn't money either. Stock in a company is a, is a counterparty risk relationship where I'm taking on risk for hopeful reward. Like the money, the, the world has been missing a money, a, a hard money in the market that you can't consume it. You can't eat the Bitcoins. You can't put the Bitcoins in a phone. The Bitcoins can't be the pillars of a building. They're just there to buy, to exchange later for something else. And so all the other, the, the, the bullish case for Bitcoin is that all the wealth that's trapped in these other assets because people have had nowhere to go will get demonetized. So all the money, so let me give you an example. I've always said the guy that's rich has 10 houses. The guy that's living paycheck to paycheck can never afford one. And the problem is because real estate is being used as money. So the real estate prices are highly inflated. What's going to happen is the guy with 10 houses will sell nine of his houses to buy Bitcoin because Bitcoin's a better money, a better store of value. It goes up more and he'll just have the house that he wants to live in. And that will end up making the housing market affordable for the guy that's too poor <laughs> to own one. So then everyone's a homeowner and everyone actually moves storing their wealth and their money into Bitcoin. So Bitcoin fixes the monetization, the over monetization of all these assets. And it like that's that. But it's just it's just frustrating that no one understands what money is like basic principles. Like when Larry thinks like, oh, it's a really good global money that lives outside of government intervention. And the guy goes, well, oh, I can't even 
it can't eat, like Apple can't build my iPhone with it. It was like, oh, you moron. <laughs> it's the point. If we could consume the Bitcoins, they'd be worse. Like if people were buying Bitcoins to put on top of their hot dog, that'd be awful, right? Ketchup isn't money. Uh, whatever. Anyway. <laughs> I don't know what to say about gold. I think I think I said this last time. I am congenitally unable to ever see the long side of gold. I just I think gave too many margin calls. Too many people. Too many people. You know, there's so much overlap in you know a lot of the same arguments for the people you deal with, with that attract people to Bitcoin. Also attracted people to gold. Um, and coming out of the '70s was high inflation, and then you know, the general mood of the market, it, in retrospect, the 80s were a golden age for financial assets, but heading into them, not at all. You thought Reagan was going to, you know, saber rattle too much and with his Cold War rhetoric and inflation was still fresh in everybody's mind. I mean, metals were um, and just never protected investors through the whole time, you know, I was in that industry that um, gold never protected you. And you know, like I said, doesn't return a yield. You got to pay somebody to store it, and it doesn't really protect you. Um, where else? Real estate. Real estate's a sitting duck. For real estate to offer is, you know, same argument. It's limited and does offer protections against monetary debasement, but you're a sitting duck for taxation or seizure, right? I mean, although, like I said, I'm I'm not at all worried that a government, Western governments, can get to the point where they're so broke that they seize they start you know impairing real estate because that everybody loves i mean the real estate's who you have to appeal to the um but other assets that are going to get taxed um yeah i i i think real estate's a sitting a sitting duck for taxation yeah bitcoin is you know is like like you say how did that happen because we found gold we use real estate no we but how did it happen? It's because we made Bitcoin. We made it specifically to be a better version, right, yes. of, of storing wealth. Yes. Yeah. Bitcoin's the like first ever man-engineered right. money. The before you have li centralized lists like the Fed, and those aren't money. Those are our lists. And then you've got tokens like gold that Mother Nature created. That right. But just happens to check the boxes um for wealth storage yeah but yeah and i know the way you're watching the bitcoin gold spread really mm -hmm. the way watching bitcoin demonetize precious metals um i mean particularly it's crazy like I said, isn't it so i so i got a good story uh i had a meeting with citadel uh, a long time ago this was um this was back in the casey days dylan uh, so what 2019, 2019, 2018, something like that. Yeah. Uh, I was actually at the time I was really interested in building mining difficulty derivatives. So for those that don't know how hard it is, how difficult it is to mine Bitcoin changes based on how many people are trying to mine it at the same time. So Bitcoin targets a specific rate of Bitcoins that come out of the system. And so if everyone in the world is trying to mine Bitcoin, it gets really hard. If no one gives a shit about Bitcoin, you could do it with your phone. And so it has a way of regulating how hard it is. And that difficulty is hard for a miner because if, you know, all of a sudden your costs go up because it gets so, so, so hard, how do you hedge that? So I was building difficulty derivative products and I was trying to talk to Citadel, uh, DRW. I was talking to all the big trading firms and... Some of them got it. Some of them didn't. Citadel specifically was like, huh, this Bitcoin thing. Um, why should we give a fuck at all? Was basically their question. They were like, I don't know what you're talking about. Mining. They were like pretty much the only one. Like Don and DRW were very into Bitcoin. Started Cumberland mining. But Citadel, Ken Griffin's firm, had no idea what I was talking about. And I said, is, I swear to God, I said, if I were you guys and all the money that you got, here's the trade I would run. I would put on a massive gold short and a long Bitcoin. And that was the way that was the way I tried to explain what Bitcoin was to like a bunch of hedge fund douchebags was this thing 
is a better money than what gold was supposed to be, and it's going to demonetize it. And so Bitcoin, I don't know, what was spot price Bitcoin in 2018? Like three grand. Uh, and I, I was like, go, you just short gold and long Bitcoin. That's the trade. And you're just going to capture. That's like the only way to really capture the ARB of this wealth transfer. If I were, if I were running your Citadel hedge fund desk, Mr. Douchebag, and <laughs> – he didn't. He didn't give a shit. I, I assume he didn't put that trade on. But I agree with you. It's just going to extract all the wealth out of these dumb little coins that we find in the ground. It's going to extract the wealth out of real estate. That's why the the real price for Bitcoin is. I just. It's unimaginably high. That's the meme of uh of you know when you're ready to sell it, you won't have to. By that time, you just walk into the grocery store and use all the bitcoins you've acquired over the years. But yeah, I mean how. All the wealth in the world should go into it. Everything else, we should use it. We should consume it like the market good it's supposed to be. You, you buy a house because you live in it, not because you're storing wealth. You buy equity in a company because you believe in the last earnings call, not because it's passive investment of your 401k, uh, right? Like you buy gold coin if you're building a new phone, not if you want to store wealth. I think, uh, I think for that news anchor, I feel like... Bitcoin, to understand Bitcoin as better money is really, I mean, it's just an incredibly difficult narrative for the general population, right? Yeah, but because what about to, understanding money, period? What about, well, uh, well, that's what what I was gonna get, well, that's what I was going to get to. Because if you sit in a room full of Bitcoiners and you say like, hey, what do you think about the US dollar? It's like pitchforks, right? Strikes, ah, it's a piece of shit, fuck, you know, whatever. If you ask someone generally on the street what they think of the US dollar, it's like, all right, it's like, fine. I don't know, I guess. But there's no understanding of money. And then to, 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 to be able to like attempt to equivocate between the two, okay, is Saquon Barkley a better running back than me? Well, how would you assess that? He's bigger than me. He's stronger than me. He's faster than me, right? And so that's a pretty easy thing to equivocate. But without a fundamental or like a baseline understanding of money to try to pitch to retail why one thing is better, right? It's already like you're already kind of past the – point of understanding where you need to be, where you're talking to someone about something that they don't understand from a baseline perspective in the first place. So I find the narrative to be like a really difficult thing to propagate to retail in general. But for those that get it, once they do, it's one of the stickiest things I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love the uh, Saifedean and Moose uh, Bitcoin adoption is like gunpowder. His point is, or this is my favorite thing about what you just said, is if if you don't get it, like I was uh, hosting uh, my girlfriend's birthday party last night and everyone's always, oh, yo, the Bitcoin price, you must be happy. I'm like, yeah, you, you should get some. I'm like, no, I'm not getting any Bitcoin. Ah, what do I look like? And the the funny thing is, is like jokes on you. I don't care because Bitcoin gets adopted like gunpowder. It's not like iPhone adoption. iPhone adoption is marketing and I have to convince you that the iPhone is better than the Android or better than a flip phone, whatever. Gunpowder adoption is if you don't adopt, imagine if the French didn't adopt gunpowder, there would be no France. They would have gotten, <laughs> they would have gotten murdered, right? So gunpowder adoption is out of necessity. Bitcoin's going to go up whether you buy it or not. Like the, 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 the thing is, is in, in a marketplace of goods, like the hard money is going to go up the most. So I can sit in this party and this, you know, douchebag finance bro can sit here and tell me that he's never going to buy Bitcoin. And that's just like, okay, you're going to go show up to war with sticks and stones while someone else has gunpowder. Okay. You're just, I, you either adopt Bitcoin or Bitcoin's going to murder you. <laughs> right. That's how I think of it as it. So fine fox news man because because all these people that don't understand bitcoin and think it's a ponzi and all this stuff but it's already now exceeded silver's market cap and is actively demonetizing gold in the etf markets etf flows are leaving gold etfs and entering bitcoin and so i would i would tell the fox news guy this is not iphone marketing this is gunpowder marketing if you don't adopt the gunpowder and you go to, you show up to war with sticks and stones and naughty words 
about someone's mother, well, you're going to just get shot in the head. So, I don't know. It doesn't matter, I guess, my point. I used to think it mattered. I would sit all day and, and, and explain to the – it's like, okay, you don't get it. You'll get it because all, all, all your buddies that ha- can afford the houses and can afford the, your kids' college tuitions and can afford the cars, they're storing their value in, in, a, in a good money, and you enjoy your rent and your student loans. Um, that's what not adopting gunpowder is, is just monetary suicide. <laughs> I like that term. Oh, the other thing I'm really looking forward to is in addition to everything else is, um, yeah, you know, ETFs and um, nation state rumors or whatnot is also a presidential election. Bitcoin mm-hmm. is, is right. We're, we're on, on the debate stage. I don't think anybody particularly likes us, but um, well, there are candidates or candidates Right, we're getting a lot more legitimacy. Um, not any of the leaders, right? Not Trump, Biden, but um, um, Vivek and Kennedy and everybody. I mean, we're getting a lot more credibility through yeah. politics. I always, I mean, ETF adoption on the stage with politics. I've never understood why we don't have more um, e-commerce good news you know, more e-commerce site adoption, but I'll take it. I'll take the nation state and the political, uh, I mean, everybody's talking about it. Yeah. Um, and that is, uh, you know, that's the way it seeps in. Yeah. Yeah. The, on the, I mean, I don't understand what the incentive for a politician is to be on sort of the wrong side of Bitcoin. It just doesn't make sense to me. Okay. You're going to what ban it. You're going to tax it to death. I mean, Bitcoin is, is, it's like this digital cockroach. It will survive. If you ban Bitcoin, first of all, which is like not even remotely possible to do, actually, right? How can I ban 12 words in my head? But you can't do it. It's not possible, right? Yeah, so, you know the answer already, to your question, why, why would they be antagonists towards Bitcoin? Well, who is, who, who are they answering to, right? Traditional finance. Why does Jamie Dimon hate Bitcoin? Why doesn't he just simply get along and offer services? But why does he hate it? Um, why does he consider it? Why does Warren Buffett hate it? And the same reason Liz Warren hates it. I mean, they're all, I mean, they're politicians. You work for who pays for you. Or, you know, you work for your, that's how I assume we, I, you would never know that, but Bitcoin is a pretty easy litmus test for who your donor is, right? <laughs> Who's your donor? Well, the average club or Chase Manhattan? Well, that depends. Are you for Bitcoin or against Bitcoin? Because that's your answer. Yeah, I guess it's less about hating it for me. Like, great, you hate it. Bitcoin doesn't give a fuck. It will never give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. Uh, it's not possible for you to convince it to give a fuck. Um, but okay, hate it all you want. You can't do anything about it. That's what I feel like politicians fail to recognize. You cannot do anything about it. Well, it's also, I mean, hear, hear yourself talk out loud, man. Um, a politi- politicians don't, the, their job is to, or their career is to convince themselves that they can do something about everything, right? Like Jerome Powell literally thinks if he finds the right formula between inflation and interest rates, he can foster a phenomenal economy. I mean, I don't know what drugs that guy has to put up his nose to think (laughs) that, but he thinks that, right? Like Elizabeth Warren thinks that in her spare time, she can sit and give us all the right amount of policy and structure to have the best version of society, where in reality, the best money is a hard one that no one touches. Oh, look at those balloons. (laughs) So that that happen? I don't know. (laughs) Oh. Um, the best money is a hard one that no one can make more of and the best rules are just pretty much no rules let people be themselves stop fucking telling everyone what to do but that's all what politicians politicians are always convinced that they that's their whole job is can somehow they know what's best for everyone else what like it's that's insane right. I mean, that's, that's, right that's you kelly um gift he really does trust his people with their money i mean it's um liz warren does not i mean they want fdic insurance and they want federal oversight and on markets they do not trust markets um 
Bukele does. He seems to really love allowing his people to control yeah. their own finances. It's, it's crazy. If you were to and go they, to, they love him for it. If you were to go to a class of kindergartners and you were to say, Hey guys, despite you thinking you know what's best for yourself, actually your classmate Susan is going to dictate where you go, what you eat, what you're allowed to do, and the value of your money. Like the kindergartners would be like, fuck Susan. What? <laughs> like if I want to draw or I want to go on the slide or I want to go play with friends outside, I'm not going to ask for Susan's permission. What the fuck? Susan was born just like I was. Why the fuck would I give a shit about what Susan wants for me? But then <laughs> fast forward 20, 30, 40, 50 years later, and all these humans are like, please, Elizabeth Warren, tell me what to eat. What? I don't care. Whatever. Elizabeth Warren can eat what she wants to eat. You didn't tell me what to eat. It's bizarre. But I, I guarantee you, if you get like a bunch of five-year-olds in a room, you say, you guys no longer get to act how you want to act. You now have to listen to Joe. They'd be like, no, no. I would go play on the recess playground where and when I want to and regulate myself. So I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I think politicians, the whole thing is just bizarre to me. It's never made any sense why I would want to, I'm not, I'm going to listen to Jerome Powell and Joe Biden to live my life. No chance. But they convince themselves that they know what's best. Well, I mean, then keep it as absolutely um, opaque, you know, keep it as confusing as possible. Do you really, all right, I'm sorry your groceries went up. So you're now an expert on M3 money velocity and the Ukraine war's impact on the supply chain. It's all gobbly, gobbly, gobbly. No, you guys, you guys printed more money in the last 30 months than you printed in the last 30 years. And my prices went up. It's really not that difficult. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> So, and it's, yeah, you're just, it, the dollar is easily bleeding out against anything that is reasonably fixed, even though, like I said, I don't think gold in real estate is near that fixed. You can put another story on the top of your building and put another penthouse on top of it. Um, it's not easy to do that, but um, so it, real estate has some of the characteristics. So it'd be quite just better at, at, at being a fixed asset um, during the coming tsunami of money mm -hmm. yeah i agree i agree and i you know just it's so funny to see you know how if they like it's not you know the bitcoin light bulb doesn't hit like a particular industry or geographical segment or age group or whatever right you'll get Jack Dorsey, then you get Saquon Barkley, then you get Jack Mallers. I mean, there's those are different ages, different experiences in, in the job market, different careers. But I don't know. It's just like once people get it, like there's no stopping Saquon, right? He's not going to switch to the next hot currency, next or restructure or anything. Once once you're a Bitcoiner, you're not budging, right? All you can do is talk. Right? Look at Sailor. Just put, all he does is talk Bitcoin all day long. You know, uh, an interesting idea that I read recently, um, it's the first time I'd uh, been pitched to think about it this way, is because I was I was with a bunch of no-coiners last night, uh, people asking about Bitcoin and couldn't convince themselves to buy it. And the number one thing people keep saying is, you know, I'm just late. I'm late to the game. Um, and I love the, this is a new idea, is, uh, thinking you're late to Bitcoin is an ego test. It's just your ego fooling with you. Because late late to who? There, Bitcoin, there is no one taking attendance. Bitcoin yeah. doesn't, Bitcoin isn't even a human. It's a piece of software. It can't take attendance. It doesn't know time. It has no idea when you showed up. It doesn't even give a shit about who you are. Um, so late to who? Oh, late when you compare yourself to other people late when you compare yourself to your friends or to your siblings that's what you're late so bitcoin is an ego test i loved that as well so i think it's a litmus test it's an ego test if you're willing to say you know what it is the hardest best thing for me to own it doesn't matter if i owned it later or earlier than any other person that's not what life's about um life's about being a great person 
and contributing to the future and yeah, storing my, my wealth and something hard. But I found that interesting too, because the number one thing you get from no coiners is I'm late. It's like, Oh, and you're not late. You're insecure. Um, it's a, it's an, it's an ego, it's an ego test. Um, it's it bitcoin doesn't take attendance it doesn't even know who you are so you're not late you're insecure so as soon as you can fix whatever's going on inside of you you can own bitcoin and bitcoin will reward you for that but i love the litmus test and the ego test it was the first time i heard that but yesterday when i was talking to all these no coiners and everyone's like oh i'm late i'm late I'm like, well you, know, you probably put down the booze you sound insecure you don't sound late <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know everybody no i everyone thought they were late i thought like i said i when we used to uh i was so grateful to krieger for educating me on this and he goes you know bill I, you missed the article i wrote two years prior to the one you read so yeah you're at least two years later than me so <laughs> yeah that's a for a, a protocol that was only four years old at the time i was already two years late now everybody feels that way i guess is the point um but 10 years but to jack's point like, you can i mean you can is 2013 look any different than 2018 or 2016 right if you look back on it 20 years hence you can literally like bitcoin's a mate you can quantify whether or not you're late every four years the new supply of bitcoin has if the uh if the interest in buying bitcoin is 50 percent less four years from today than it is now then sure i you know there might be an argument that you're late as long as you're you know as long as you don't believe that to be true and i think you'd be a moron to think that that would be true four years from now that people are less interested in bitcoin than they are today then you're not late you're not late price will go up yeah. number go up technology it's how it works but i i do think bitcoin is just such a i'm i love the quote the world uh can change bitcoin because bitcoin uh wait what is it uh bitcoin can change the world because the world can't change bitcoin, bitcoin. um yeah and it's it's that it's gonna fix your ego because if you think about it rationally you don't think about it with any emotion you say okay i have a bunch of assets which one is the hardest to make more of the easiest to store the safest to secure and the one that's going to go up the most against a currency that my government prints and it's bitcoin and so the obvious answer it doesn't matter about any other context is to take your currency and put it into bitcoin like when i talk about living on bitcoin people are like wow you got a lot of balls i don't have a lot of balls i have two balls i have <laughs> i have a lot of logic i have a lot of why would i hold something that they can print more of um versus put it into bitcoin it's just very logic and it's very sane but it removes all emotion is yeah when you hear about bitcoin the natural human tendency is oh man why wasn't i as smart as the guy i know that was got it earlier but it's just it kills all that ego it really does it's like it's a therapeutic experience to get into bitcoin because it removes your ego it challenges the litmus test challenge all your preconceived notions about the world i don't know it was the first time i'd ever heard that uh that one the ego one it was a good one um dad i'm curious uh your take on price action uh because i think the last episode and i agree with you is like you know the elevator's too crowded um with all these people uh we're gonna we're gonna people someone's gotta take the stairs i forget the analogy you said but it's that the trade felt too crowded but this thing doesn't seem like it could slow down for it just methodically is just marching it's are we at 70 right at 69 and a half what do you think do you still hold those same price opinions because i think these etf inflows are just a different beast like even if there's a lot of levered retail maybe we wash them down for a second but then the next day blackrock buys five thousand bitcoin like a day right i mean it's just too much <laughs> no you know I, same thing i always say i i it was a lot easier I think to trade Bitcoin from the long side when everyone told us we were crazy. The like the leading right, the New York Times would run op eds that literally titled "Bitcoin is evil." That um, there was there was legitimate concern right about how governments were going to treat it and stuff. It was it was an, I don't know. It's just easier to be aggressive when, like you say, they're not. They're, 
the trade just wasn't as crowded. And I think markets, that, but I, you know, there's been plenty of markets. Like I said, the stock market during the 90s, I'd say, um, had kind of that, that same feel where coming out of, you know, all the disruption and inflation of the 70s. And then we had, you know, the, um, you know, the October 19th um, stock market collapse was just too fresh in everybody's mind. You know, that was 20% stock market decline in one day. And the leverage available, you know, for stock index futures were, I don't know, three, four, five percent. So even if you're conservative, you're using 10% leverage and you lost 20% in one trading day. It was just like, that's a scary out market. There, you don't, I don't want to hear about it, Billy. I'm not interested. I don't want to walk past that pit, right? <laughs> and I might get an out trade. Um, and uh, Bitcoin, I don't see that it's going to do that. So how are we going to, How's this market going to get healthier? How's the open interest going to refresh? I, I would say it, more of a wear you out than a than a correction. More frustration, lack of follow through, every false breakouts. Uh, you know, just a you know, just a real frustrating kind of market until hot. You know, the speculative money moves on to the next GameStop, right? <laughs> the next thing. Well, because there's always markets, there's always money for markets that can do that. And Bitcoin has certainly done that. Um, I just think it's too crowded right now. Shake shake right. the market out a little bit and get it a little healthier going into the halving. Let me ask you a question uh, on the, because I agree with you about, the New York Times coming out with nasty pieces. That's kind of how you knew you're right. I don't hear that anymore. All you hear, every time I turn on financial cable, somebody's long Bitcoin talking about great yeah. Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what about, what if we've just entered a different phase of its life where, because it used to be a corner of the internet that hung out on r slash Bitcoin's Reddit channel or whatever, and media would shit on us but what if it's just graduated a little bit where now people still shit on bitcoin but they're shitting on larry fink they're not shitting on us anymore and it may feel like to us that we're getting complimented because shitting on larry fink is a compliment to me but it's not to larry fink right like that guy's the most pristine wall street veteran he's probably feels offended uh, like come on it's my opinion you, it's the first time you guys ever question anything i do so what if it's just the same thing, just at a different stage? You factor that in and all? Because, I mean, being just a normal re everyday retail person, it's hard for me to get a gauge on whether people are being friendly or unfriendly to Bitcoin. Because, yeah, you're right. I think, oh, man, like I haven't heard anyone say a bad thing about Bitcoin. But then I watched the Larry Fink interview and they're like, they're they're telling Larry Fink he doesn't understand money. I was like, did that guy manage $15 trillion? <laughs> what a rude <laughs> thing to, to say. Um, so I don't know. I can't tell if it's just Bitcoin's entered a different chapter where people aren't offending me anymore because they were offending me 10 years ago. Um, now they're on to the bigger fish and I just got to hold on tight and just kind of enjoy the show. Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't want to argue on the point I would love. Yeah. Well, let's all sit around, get the best and the brightest, analyze these markets, position ourselves accordingly, and then nobody's got to show up for work on Monday. I, I would love to live in that world, but I just, I mean, this market's going to figure out, I, even the strongest, best bull markets in the world, figure out a way to get, right, to get, to refresh the open interest, to get healthier, to get, like I said, if not, think of it this way. If we all, if there were a way to trade, right, this movie average across that movie average, the experts say this, and Larry Fink says this, so we, if we all, we should all buy Bitcoin, who would we buy it from? Right. I mean, who is who is going to sell it to you if the whole if the consensus is 100 percent to to go buy it? I mean, it's it's market's got to find a way to get healthy if the price gets up high enough so that you can prize some out of the old DOGs um, or like I say, you know, some type of market shock or shake or, you know, markets, markets being markets. There was absolutely nothing wrong. Right. With. The stock markets I saw, but it crashed twice, right? Once, um, you know, the famous one in '87, but the one in '89 was—I think that was double-digit percent. It's like 13 percent when um, wasn't that the airline merger unraveled late on a Friday? And here we go again. You know, the markets didn't have all the circuit breakers in place. The mar markets are gonna do that. I just, 
I don't know. You guys, you guys tell me, can you see any of those old style Bitcoin hard breaks? I I don't. I think it's gonna be more no. of a yeah. wear, wear it, endurance test rather than a scary out market. Yeah. And so I don't disagree with that. And that brings me to my last price action question is are you worried about any I was looking at some of the selling because it's interesting given the ETF flows just mathematically we should be at like 100k so someone's selling to your point and I was trying to figure out because you know one of the ways the markets does this is it washes out someone like FTX right so it doesn't have to be people that think no bitcoin's actually going down from here it's forced selling so people that are levered in some way where they're late on their rent and they need to sell bitcoin or there's a 90 whatever 9 billion dollar hole in your balance sheet and you got to sell bitcoin so uh, do you, what about uh barry is barry barry still knee deep in shit right um and so i'm i'm trying to think of cuz you're right it does feel like everyone's oh having etf etf and then someone someone's gonna oh that guy's insolvent Boy, 10 this. billion dollars in the hole that that would wash this thing out that would send this thing down back down to 50 and make everyone question if the having is uh, is gonna work or whatever so i don't know like you speculate on i do you know about barry's solvency at all but it feels like that right because you're right if everyone's just gonna be long bitcoin then someone is gonna get investigated by the fbi and or whatever the fuck, right? I don't know. Like, that's what always happens. Yeah, no, hopefully we're outliving all of that. You know, the early days of Bitcoin were um, evidently the industry was built by people who have no idea how to secure Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> Mount Gox lost all their coins. They lost 10% of them. They weren't impaired, right? They got that cleaned out. Um, all the... Uh, uh, you know, obviously all the drug markets got taken down and then, you know, that all cycled through the government. So we had to absorb an enormous amount of supply due to liquidations um, as opposed right, to just new issuance. And um, is that done yet? Yeah. Who else, who else is left from the old days that, that to, to liquidate anymore? I don't have any any inside knowledge, but it's got to be running down, down, right? We are, we, we've got to be replaced by... Um, the, you know the industry just doesn't have any of those old old very very few of them left anymore right there are a lot of eastern european exchanges that that had to liquidate also right cookie you remember are there any who well, all the liquidations that we had to go through famously you know silk road yeah there was um there were also other other liquidations we had to plow they, yeah. they're asking like what do i think about the, if there's going to be a genesis liquidation or something you know, yeah, maybe, but it's nothing like in the old days. Well, someone's selling a lot of Bitcoin right now. I think it's Barry. Well, that's the other. That's the only other reason uh, his ETF pricing is so ridiculous is I don't think he can afford to cut his revenues a sixth. I think he's broke and he's in trouble. So I think that there's some liquidations that are countering the ETF flows. Like BlackRock's buying 5,000 Bitcoin a day and the price is flat. Well, there's not that many mined. So who's selling at that size? So it feels like we may get like some update of like, you know, some, you know, big court came to consensus and Barry has to auction off a c egregious amount of coins or something. I don't know. But yeah, I don't know. Outside of that. That'd be I a guess. shame. If it is, then that's got to be the last one, right? I mean, it's yeah. got to be all the, all the products. Like I said, CME is not going to go down. And even if they do, it's a cash settled product. So all of this huge inventories and mismanaged exchanges and um, from the old days is we got to be down to the to the end of that, right? I hope so. <laughs> I hope um, so. I don't know who else? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Well, uh, what do you want to do, uh, Mr. Lito Q&A? What, yeah, what let's get to it. it. Let's go. Let's do it to it. We got three great questions. Thanks everyone for submitting the questions this week. We're going to go with these three. Uh, starting off with Blake O'Neill asks, any concerns over a crackdown on self-custody? Love the show. Thanks in advance. Uh, me? No. I don't I don't think they could even attempt that. 
Um, I they think they they understand Bitcoin well enough to know that that would that would be China bans Bitcoin. Come on, I mean we've already tried it. It's it's never going to work. So no. I agree. I mean, I'm trying to ban twelve words in my head. Right. I wish you luck. No, I mean that's way to you spend very, your life. Geez. Um, like the the you know the same thing. I always say the qualities that that you look for when you buy Bitcoin. Um, gold happened to have them. Real estate happens to have them. Bitcoin was specifically designed for them. And one of the things you do design a store of value is is you know confiscation is you do want them. And and Bitcoin is just brilliantly designed um, so to be unconfiscatable. Um, so no, I am not concerned. Yeah, if you purchase non-KYC Bitcoin, custody it correctly, the only way to get my Bitcoin would be to torture me. So yeah, but, if yeah, that's the option they want to go down. KYC, even if you purchase KYC Bitcoin, um, yeah, yeah. what are you going to say, hey, I'm, in, I'm creating a new rule. Um, you're not allowed to memorize 12 words. Excuse <laughs> you? It just wouldn't make any sense. Um, so uh, Who's going to pass this government to... To uh, you know, put that legislation to a vote, but uh, <laughs> yeah, they might. There's only you can only memorize nine-ish words, but not twelve. <laughs> I can see this go. Ah, well, you'll throw you a tenth, but yes, um, I don't see how. Excuse me, officer. That guy over there remembered twelve words. <laughs> no, no way. Get him. <laughs> yeah, and I, I uh, also I don't know if you guys saw uh, Jerome Powell say uh cbdc's are stupid do you see that no oh wow no yeah stupid. i don't know i mean he didn't use the word uh terminology stupid exactly but it was uh he doesn't think we'll see one anytime soon doesn't really wow, get the value of it. issue with him he certainly i mean a anybody on his side of the issue has got to appreciate right the the surveillance ability the control ability i mean it's um I was, what is his issue with CBDCs? I don't know. It was it was part of a a hearing, so I'll have to watch the full clip. But my takeaway, just sc uh, scrolling through Twitter, was more like, you know, logic is just prevails. Like all these doomsday scenarios, it's real. It, it'd be really impossible for them to launch a CBDC and ban me memorizing twelve words. Like I just think that that's just such a far fetched idea. Is the CBDCs don't make any sense. And it's against a lot of people's interests. It's the same reason of why don't they tax, uh, why don't they do unrealized capital gain? And it's because that's how they make money too. Like, you know, that's how <laughs> it just would be so impossible to create like a draconian state. Um, so, no, anyway. Well, I, they also, I mean, they, they, they also, governments know that they have a really poor history of prohibitions right i mean the pro alcohol prohibition is working about as well as cannabis prohibition where i mean you just you can't stop people on an individual level and particularly money is transactional peer-to-peer -peer is all is going to be impossible to surveil and i think I, I i don't i think they know that and that is not on my worry list you don't think the war on drugs is working <laughs> <laughs> It's not uh, working in the White House for crying out loud. Don't they? They find <laughs> dangerous yeah, drugs. A bag there. Of coke in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we only uh, have cannabis and and caffeine around here. Um, you guys have white powders. <laughs> yeah, here's what uh he said. Uh I want to say that we're nowhere near recommending or let alone adopting a central bank digital currency in any form, Powell said in a March 7th hearing before the Senate oh. Committee on Banking. Um, that's just something we would not stand for or do or propose here in the United States. Wow. Got my vote. <laughs> I was gonna again, again, yeah. To again, it. I just think rare, it's rare W. It's yeah. it's like all these things are just so far fetched. Um, but anyway. Well, this next, next question thing. is about as far fetched as it gets. Lord Monkey asks, great, great handle, by the way. Uh, Lord Monkey asks, does Bitcoin have a natural end, something akin to the heat death of the universe? <laughs> oh, I, I think like, no, you base layer collateral. 
um, right? As everybody's end game for Bitcoin is just it is where it's below the surface. It's collateralizing any, and it, it's just a better job. It um, it's a it's an update to the financial system to a segregated just to have a, a base layer that functions everywhere. So it is you know it whether it's your car loan or your mortgage or your peer to peer transactions. Yeah, that's I think the end game is that it's just kind of assumed to be below the surface and the layer twos, you know, what you guys are doing, that's where the innovation is going to be. But as just the value transfer base layer for international commerce, that's, I think the end, everyone's end game for Bitcoin. So right. You don't got to defend it anymore. Don't got to worry about, you know, regulatory stances or seizures or taxes. Um, it is just presumed as the rock, as the foundational. Um, and then anything, anything, developers want to work on and regulators want to argue about is all is more layer two stuff type of stuff that's my end game right isn't that everybody's bitcoin end game it's just fixed solved it and it yeah. operates as the base layer the hyper bitcoinization i think um money wants to be one yeah you know you don't you don't walk into chipotle and say i want my number one yeah there you go it wants to be one you, you walk into chipotle and you say i've got um, U.S. dollars and Bitcoin. They say, "Oh no, we accept the other 497. We don't <laughs> accept those two. Money wants to be one. The whole point is to have a market good that you ex you acquire it to exchange it later, and that's the market good known as money. And everything else you consume. Uh, and so, I think the end game is if Bitcoin is the monetary market good for all of us, and then real estate you consume it, food you consume it. I actually think." Bitcoin will also bring about a renaissance in things like art. Um, I think I think uh, it'll because America has been so hyper financialized. I think a lot of the more like creative uh, acts of humanity will come back um, because we won't have to be so hyper fixated on financializing everything. Um, so yeah, I but. When when there's only one money in the marketplace, that's Bitcoin is probably the end. I like the way GG put it. In the event of a nuclear holocaust, as long as there's one node and a copy of the code, Bitcoin survives. Mm -hmm. No, isn't that what people say? If you you know talk to a vendor in some type of tourist town, um, you know where people are showing up with euros and yen, and they'll um, and you know they'll I will. Definitely, I'll pay my landlord, I'll pay my vendors in the local currency, but I want to accept dollars, right? I want, I, I want, because that's what, you know, tourists, do you want me to pay in euros, yen, boulevards, what, you know, I'll, I'll accept payment in dollars, but I'm paying out in the local currency. And I think just writ large, I think that's what Bitcoin, I don't, I don't like people, people like, right, the payments will be all layer two, but Bitcoin will just be the collateralizing. Um, you know, it will be the collateralizing base layer. It'll be the, you know, the dollar in that uh, multi-currency tourist town I just described. I'll, I'll take it. That's where I'll, I'll take, but I'm paying, you know, I'm transacting on layer two, but Bitcoin is foundational. Yeah. Just got just to live long enough to get there. You guys, that's all I say. Brooke always looks at me like, I, I, it's so much fun talking about all these like science fiction-y projections for, what what does fixing the money fix the world actually look like? And um, then we look at each other. And I, I just I hope it happens in the next twenty or so years because I really want to enjoy. It. I want to be young enough to travel. <laughs> Our final question, and in the spirit of the orange jersey, uh, Blenich Blenick. Sorry if I butchered that. Blenick two one three asks. I think we have Bill's answer. What should the Bears do at quarterback? I, I you know I. We're gonna go with Justin. Why do you have quarterbacks, as you know, are 50-50 whether they can get in, you know, come out of college. I don't care how many, you know, how many Heisman's you won in college, whether you that translates into the NFL is I, I think very close to 50-50, particularly if you're from Chicago. So um why take the risk? I would just try to develop and we also know did Justin get a fair shot, right? He had nobody to throw the ball, block, hand. So I I would use, right, Saquon's on the, Saquon's a free agent. 
tell me, Justin, Justin with Saquon in the background is a, is a lot better chance. I I would want to, you know, before you take roll the dice on on another kid coming out of school, I go Justin and use that use our draft picks to support him. I don't know about that. Um, what is what was was the question? What and I think like speed in that I mean that's the thing for NFL quarterbacks now. You cannot be a pocket quarterback anymore. You got to have um sprinter speed. I mean they all do. all those Mahomes guys run all over the field making things happen. That's like the new paradigm for um for NFL, and we got one. Yeah. I, one. Well, People. is the question what do I think will happen or what do I want to happen? It's just what should the Bears do at quarterback? What the Bears do. Oh, I think we should keep Justin and use whatever resources to support him. Get him a running back, or get him someone, right? Somebody other than Darnell Moon, right? Is pretty much our. You know, <laughs> yeah. Like the, how many? How many touchdowns did Walter Payton uh, score in the in the Super Bowl where the Bears scored forty six points? He had zero. We're not a. I mean, we that. How much did the defense? Yeah, we were running back. I'm sure Hester's running kicks back. The defense is is running picks back, um, right? It is an aggressive. Chicago's always been more of an aggressive defensive team. I don't know that we need that much offensive talent, but it'd be fun to watch, wouldn't it? Yeah, of course. I I mean, there's the the PTSD trauma of the Pat Mahomes. Supposedly, Caleb Williams is the closest prospect to Patrick Mahomes since we passed on Pat Mahomes. Who'd we draft? Mitch Trubisky. Um, <laughs> so um, there's trauma there, but no, I mean, I think Justin, he, uh, honestly, he, he didn't have the best year. Um, he, he scared me at times. I mean, uh, him as a pocket pa passer didn't look very good. Um, and so uh, I, I just don't know. I honestly, I don't know uh, what you do. Um, I mean, is it it's can't get much worse for the Chicago Bears. So either we get to trade the pick and get a bunch of assets, or we get to trade Justin and get a bunch of assets. But uh, it feels like whatever we do will be the wrong decision. Um, if we don't, <laughs> oh no, we don't we trade draft, him, we'll, we'll we'll trade him to like the Detroit Lions, and and he'll they'll blow us out. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll, trade him, we'll trade him to the division. <laughs> yeah, he'll. But we're gonna trade him. For, really, God, send him, send him far away. Yeah, it, uh, I don't want to face that guy. Um, no, it'll be um, yeah, it'll be it'll be Chicago. It'll be somewhere between five and negative five. And he won't be able to feel his fingers anymore, and he'll wonder what. Right. Yeah. Um, but now he's got Saquon on the backfield with him. It just, I think that it changes his prospects of of you know working out in Chicago. Yeah, I mean, if we trade him, he will win a Super Bowl. And if we <laughs> uh, pass on Caleb Williams, he will be uh, the new Patrick Mahomes. So. Uh, we, it's a lose lose for us. Um, just being bear fans, we got to get McCaskey to sell. That's the other thing. Maybe, um, Bitcoin can help bring young ownership to sports franchises. That's the problem with these sports franchises is all these people, not necessarily the McCaskies as, as a Chicago, I don't know what they're, but all these traditionally, all these sports owners are old and racist, right? Aren't they all old and all racist? And yes. so maybe if we can get a bunch of new younger wealth um, that can take over sports franchises, and I would love to see some new ownership here in Chicago, both for the Bulls and the Bears. Uh, so uh, I think uh, nothing but downside if McCaskies are making the decisions, but I don't know. We'll see. You might think this is uh, Bears pessimism over here, but it's Bears realism. I promise you, we will make the wrong decision. Yeah, sure. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Uh, All right. Yeah. Anything else? No, we're good. Oh, what's a Bitcoin price? Signing off at uh, what is it? Six nine five. Signing off at sixty nine thousand five hundred thirty three dollars and nine cents. We're about what five hundred bucks off from a new high. Uh, we are, and we are. 
uh, how many days away from a having? Month and ten days. I know havings, ETFs. Forty-one days. Forty-one days. What are we gonna talk about after all this excitement is over? <laughs> you got uh um we'll see. Yeah. Will be a good problem to have. Um, all right, yeah. Well, I'll talk to you guys on FaceTime. And until next week, continue to ask uh questions, give us feedback, leave comments. We really appreciate it. And subscribe. Oh, that's the last thing. What we crossed uh we crossed nine K. Are we at 10k subscribers yet lito on youtube uh, i think we are at i'll get the exact number 0.17 we're flying baby we're getting up there <laughs> if you guys number can, go uh, on technology yeah if you guys can give us a subscription we'll reach more people everyone so everyone can know i have two balls not a lot of balls i only have two uh all right <laughs> i appreciate it guys i'll talk to you next week see ya thanks guys see ya